Hey y'all, it's Brandon with Voodoo Forge. Now, I want to talk to you a little bit today about some types of blacksmith hammers. Uh, most people, when they think of a blacksmith hammer, this is what they think of. This is a cross paint. This is, uh, I mean, it's in most imagery of blacksmiths, this is what you have. The Soviet Union used it on their flag. Uh, it, it's, it is a very common, popular type of blacksmithing hammer. But there are several different types of cross paint hammers, and there are several different types of straight paint hammers and diagonal paint hammers. So what I want to talk to you about today is I want to show you what the peen, the, the straight, narrow peen on the back of these hammers is for, and I want to show you some of the different types of these hammers um, and what they what they do. So let's look at these things. Okay, I'm going to use this Swedish style cross peen to show you the different parts of a hammer head uh, so you know what I'm talking about while I'm talking about. The eye is the part that, that goes through the hammer head. The cheek is the piece on either side of the eye. So the top and the, and the bottom as it's laying here of, of the head. Uh, the pole or the bell is this fat part here in front of the face. This is the neck, which is a, a smaller part between the cheek and the, the pole or the bell. Uh, not all hammers are going to have a, a neck. And uh, the face, which is the large working end of the hammer, some hammers will have two faces. Uh, it, all the ones we're talking about today will just have the one. And then the peen, this is a cross peen. Uh, in a cross peen, it runs perpendicular to your handle. A straight peen runs parallel to your handle, and a diagonal peen is pretty much self-explanatory. But this way, when we're talking about hammers, you can, you can understand the lingo uh, a little better. Okay, each style of hammer head has, has its own name, and it, it comes from its, its lineage, where it came from. All of these hammers right here are cross peen hammers, but they're, in, they're grouped differently. Um, these hammers right here, um, this is just a cross peen. I've, I've heard them called a, a blacksmith's hammer. I've heard them called an American style cross peen. I don't know, these, I know less about the origins of, of this type of head than any of the rest of them. Uh, they're, they're good weight, uh, the way they're weighted, uh, they work great, but uh, they're not for everything. I like, I like hammers to be weighted differently for different jobs, but this is a good all around cross peen hammer. This is a, a two pound hammer, it's a great starting hammer. Uh, if you're just starting blacksmithing, and you go to one of the box stores, you're gonna find a hammer similar to this, but it's probably gonna be three pounds. I would try to avoid a three pound hammer in the beginning because you really need to learn technique uh, while you are developing um, the strength. And it's hard to develop technique when you're, you're using a three pound hammer and you're not used to it. So start with a smaller hammer and, and work your way up to that three pounder. Now, this is the French style cross peen hammer and it's, it's my understanding, correct me if I'm wrong in the comments if, if you have a different thought on it, but it's my understanding that the uh, peen placement on these was so you could see over your work uh, as you were, were hammering. Um, there are some jobs that I really like the way the French style head is, is weighted. Um, but I don't, I don't use these two hammers regularly. These are, these two are German style heads. And uh, by the way, you can see when we're talking about the parts of the hammer, not every type of head has all of the parts. Like uh, there's, there's no neck on this one. There's, there's no, uh, uh, um, a pole, you know, it's just a, a straight block. But I really, I use German hammers a lot. I really like the way they're weighted. They're very straightforward. Um, I also am a big fan of uh, Swedish style hammers, which you know is what I showed you. They're, I, I feel like they're they're very elegant, both in balance and. Uh, just the way that their appearance but that th these are cross beam hammers. They're also um, uh, the Czech style of hammer. 
Uh, a lot of people are familiar with it uh, because of uh, Hafi, I'm probably mispronouncing his name, but the Israeli blacksmith, very famous, very, he's a master blacksmith out of Israel and he's, he's got a lot of, uh, 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 he's very well respected and it's very well deserved. There is a hammer type that he makes that a lot of people call a Hoffi style hammer, but it's it's a Czech hammer. These hammer designs have been around for hundreds and hundreds of years. Um, uh, now these are some examples of straight peen hammers. Uh, I believe this would be along the same lines as the kind of the American style uh, or the blacksmithing, but uh, straight peen. These are all Swedish style. Uh, straight peens. I really don't use straight peens as much, but I do have them and there are jobs I break them out for. Okay, now this is a right-handed diagonal peen hammer and the peen is exactly what you would expect. It's diagonal and the reason why it's right-handed I'll show you when I start demonstrating what these things do, but if the, if the slant were going the other direction it would be a left-handed one. And uh, this is the only diagonal pin I have. A friend of mine uh, reforged uh, a, a small two pound sledge head to make this. I've had this for a long time. This is another hammer. I don't use it very often, but when I need it, I've got it. I just shot a bunch of footage of me uh, using the uh, uh, hammers, the pins on hot steel out of the forge and it was too hard to see what was going on. So I uh, asked my daughters if I could have some of their uh, Play-Doh and they gave me some and they were like, make sure you give it back. And as soon as I touched it, the yellow Play-Doh turned into that right there. Uh, they've decided they don't want it back. So I can use this to demonstrate what the hammers do. Now, all of them basically do the same thing, which is put little bitty indentations in the material. When you're hitting it like that, right there, you can see that it, it spreads the material lengthwise. I mean, it, it makes it a little wider, but it's mostly spreading it lengthwise. And when you come back with the face of the hammer, and mash out those divots there, it makes the material actually more long than it does wide. Now, it of course can also be used if you're, if you're wanting to widen the material, you would use your peen this way. Uh, and what that does is, is that widens it. You can run it in a way, of course these would be really swinging hammer strokes, to really, really widen your material uh, for things like uh, making a socket for a, a, a chisel, making a candle holder, or something like that. That's where the cross peen or the straight type of peen comes in handy for that. Now, the difference is in the peens on the hammers, the reason why we have a a, a straight peen and a diagonal peen uh, are, are how you're standing when you hit it. Now, I use a cross peen the most of all. Now, if I'm standing at my anvil where my belly is, is right here and I'm swinging the hammer, my arm has to come all the way out to the side here to do it crossways. And I have to move my body to do it this way. But with a straight peen, it's, it's straight on to do this and I have to move it to the side to do this. Now a diagonal peen, in theory, as you're using it, you can stand in your normal position and your hammer is at an angle. So that you, you're, it's supposed to be the most natural position to use it, it, it perpendicular to the face of your anvil. Um, in all reality, I have found that a diagonal peen hammer is really the answer to a problem that doesn't exist. I mean, you get used to using a, a, a straight peen and a cross peen to the point of where this, this is uh, 
you just don't need it that much. I'm sure if there's there's probably some job that if you had to do something very repetitive several times in that job where this this would really come in handy but most of the time it's just like I said so it's an answer to a problem that doesn't exist by the way this is uh this is my daughter's uh this is their play anvil when they they come in the shop where they can kind of play blacksmith this isn't for actual use <laughs> at all Can, you can see this little anvil here and you can see where I'm standing and, and uh, see my arms. So I just want to show you uh, with both of us in frame how this would work. With the diagonal pin, it's, it's, it's natural kind of standing straight on to the anvil. Whereas when you're using a, a, a cross pin, instead of uh, being able to stand straight on, you have to move around to the side a little for it to be at its, its natural, uh, where the hammer falls naturally. And with the straight pin, I find it easier to move the other direction and use it. So that's, that's the difference in the directions of the pins. Okay, last camera I want to show you. Uh, this was one. Of, this was the first actual blacksmithing type hammer I had. This was my grandfather's originally. He wasn't a blacksmith, but he had this hammer. I think everybody's grandfather has one of these somewhere in their toolbox. But you'll notice, see how mushroomed it is here. I need to actually clean that up. This hammer is softened, um, and. It, Initially, it was inadvertent. I, I had broken a handle and I had heard something from somebody that you you can burn it out and and then throw the head in STP and I, I was a kid. I mean, keep this in mind. I was, I was a kid in the 80s. And uh, so I did that and uh, later in life, you know, I, I used, but anyway, it, it was just a soft hammer then. So when I started blacksmithing, I specifically took it and annealed it, heated it to critical temperature, and uh, buried it in wood ashes and let it slow cool. And that way, the head is soft. I do not use this hammer for forging. What I use this for is hitting struck tools. Not all struck tools, but specifically, sometimes I want to misuse a hammer. I want to use the peen, either a, a cross peen or a straight peen, or a ball peen as a set hammer which is where I would, I would put the, uh, the peen on, on what I want to hit and then hit it, hit the face of it with another hammer. Well, if you hit two hardened hammer heads together, you're going to get some shrapnel. Maybe not the first time you do it, maybe not the second time you do it, but you're going to get some shrapnel. So instead of uh, softening a bunch of hammer heads so I could hit them with a regular hammer, I softened one hammer head to use as the striking tool when I'm hitting these. And that's, that's why this one's softer and uh, that's why I keep it around. The peen never gets used on this bad boy. Okay, well there's a probably oversimplified explanation for types of hammers uh, and, and what the, the peen, <laughs> the, the straight peen, or cross pin or diagonal pin is, is used for. Uh, once you put those, those grooves in when you're forging, once you actually put the indentations in with the, the pin, you come back with the face and flatten that out and it, it really expands the metal. So if you didn't know what this part was for, now hopefully you have an idea. If you didn't know the styles of hammer, um, I don't know if that's, that's really important uh, in using them. But all of them are weighted a little differently, and I use those hammers for different jobs. You always try to use the hammer for different jobs, but you have to be careful. Uh, there's, uh, I heard a guy say something I don't know who it originally is attributed to, but said the uh, blacksmith that only has one hammer always has the perfect hammer. And the blacksmith who has 20 never quite has the right one. So keep that in mind. If you find a hammer that you're good and comfortable with, that's a good thing. But anyway, I hope y'all got something out of this. I'm, I'm going to do another video 
uh, on uh, different types of hammers because we've got a few different types to go. But hopefully this will explain or is a start of the explanations of, of what these crazy hammers are for. Uh, if you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. If you get a chance, if you like the video, hit the like button. That helps me out. And also subscribe to the channel. But uh, anyway, y'all behave yourselves.